when the temperature drops, it's a great time to explore our winterless north. We're road tripping up the ancient Kauri Trail. We've got a map from Northland NZ and 10-year-old Nate is doing the navigating. Hey, on the must-do list, the Kauri Museum. The museum in Matakohi tells the story of Northland's gum-digging pioneers. The museum's based on the other land settlers that uh, were here from the 1860s through to the close of the Victorian era. So it's covering that, that period. And you've got Helen here who is, who is in the bed. Uh, she's certainly trying to keep a little bit warm on this chill winter's day. More than 60 volunteers literally bring the museum to life. Some are descendants of the original settlers who now pass on their stories to younger generations. important for us to engage the young people in what we do in museums because they're going to be the futures, future kaitiaki of our collections here. You can like you press a button and then it like starts like moving and making a noise. There's a few things like that, like the milking machine and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I also like how like it's ginormous, it's like a mansion. Am I doing this right? Yes. Am I doing it right? Is that good? Yeah. It starts off just like a rock and then after once you polish it starts to look like gold. We, we certainly encourage people to be quite hands-on and to interact with the displays. A little bit different to many of our other museums because of that. You don't see an awful lot of glass, things aren't behind that. Um, wood is quite tactile, we like people to, to come up and actually touch it and feel it. It's very warm and beautiful. Uh, and the same with the gum itself. You pick up a piece of gum and it just smells divine. Back on the road in the Sayat Ateka, it's a journey of dramatic contrast from the rolling farmland around Dargaville up to the sprawling Waipawa Forest. This 9,000 hectare Kauri sanctuary is home to New Zealand's Lord of the Forest. Tani Mahuta here is the largest and stands at uh, 2,000 years old. And our other one, our second largest, Timatua, he's the oldest at 3,000, but he's our second largest here. Ko ngā manu o te wani a tāne, tirairaka. Local iwi te roroa going to great lengths to ensure his safety from kauri dieback. We only need about maybe five milligrams that we know of that of dirt and soil to be connected to the bottom of your footwear that you could actually bring here onto the platform. But when washing your feet and footwear, sorry, at the wash station itself, this stops that from happening. And coming here onto the platform, you've got the root system of Tani Mahuta that actually travels underneath. And for that soil and that to come away from your feet without using that wash station, that poses a threat of actually bringing that disease into here and uh, travelling through his root system and actually killing Tāne Mahuta itself. We're staying at Copthorne Hokianga's new luxury villas, the Heads or Māpiri. Having a really nice quiet space, private, so you can't see in and out, targeted as, as couples, um, obviously the bed can split so you, you know, might want to bring a friend away for the weekend, um, but just somewhere luxurious that you can really feel at ease both during the winter and the summer. After the sun sets we head back to the forest for something rather special. We are only said to be alive in those moments when our hearts are conscious of our treasures. And I'm hoping that you might agree with me when I say this is one of those. Waipawa Forest is the largest remaining stand of kauri in New Zealand. The unfortunate thing is that there's like only around about between 2 and 4% of our mature trees left standing today. Amazing to think that only 100 years ago, Tāne Mahuta would have been a baby compared to the trees that were standing then. Did you hear that sound? Kiwi. Engaging one in the wild is like, you know, we can't guarantee that that's going to happen, and it happens. I mean, that's like, that's gold. <laughs> 